Okay. Right, we're in Alberta, Canada, and uh, White Moose Lake. It's so I'm going to try for some lake trout, Atlantic salmon, and some northern pike. Uh, I did a bit of fishing earlier on today. Uh, I can have a look to see. To see what I, I caught. Uh, a splake. I think that's a cross between a, a lake trout and a salmon, I think. Could be wrong. Uh, Atlantic salmon. A trophy splake. Now the, these splakes took me really close to the jetty. Uh, when I was fishing off the jetty for uh, Atlantic salmon and lake trout. So I was quite surprised the uh, gotcha was close in. I don't know, like 10 feet off the off the uh, off the jetty that they took the bait, so uh, that was a, a a pleasant surprise for the the trophy splake. A few light lake trout's all on either the crank bait or the uh, I got one on an arrow spoon because it was night time, early night. Uh, never fished late night for or at night time for the the lake trout and. Uh, but a trophy lake trout, so I, I was, I was chuffed about that, and the trophy Atlantic salmon, which was, I think I, I'd gotten another one the day before, which was twenty five pounds, and it, it gave a fair fight, and then you unique lake trout as well, yeah, forty seven, nearly forty eight pounds. I don't think it's my biggest one. I think I've got a bigger one than that, but I could be wrong. Yeah. <clears throat> this is a, a setup that I'm I'm using for the lake trout, which is a CCO energizer, seven foot ten spinning rod. Yeah, uh, max line weight forty two pounds. The uh, CCO fireball six thousand, which has a maximum drag of forty pounds. I think I've got it set roughly around about thirty. Uh, the mono is zero point two. Which I think is thirty two pounds. Mono zero point two, yeah, thirty two pounds. And uh, I was using this narrow spoon because it was it was for night night time fishing. I thought I'd give it a try, didn't know if it'd work or not, and yeah it did. So I was uh I was fair fair chuffed about that. Uh, the rod I use for Atlantic Salmon is a CTO Charger Blade 9 foot 6. Uh, the maximum line weight 21 pounds. Use the Hornet Swarm 5000 SC, max drag 28.9. You could probably just say 21 pounds. And the Fluoro 16, which is 20 pounds, uh, breaking strength. Again, I've got to stress, guys, always have your line as the weakest link. Or otherwise you're going to be in a, a whole lot of hurt up here because uh, the big fish, powerful fish, and they'll they'll strip you, they'll spill you, definitely spill you, break your reel, break your rod, and you'll be in a whole a whole world of pain because you'll need to go back somewhere and farm a whole heap of cash again to buy a new kit because once something's broken, kind of fix it. There's no way of, of fixing it. Like I said, the things have got durability. You now you can you can uh, fix the durability by uh, using your uh, cash. But once it's broken, it's broken. So I've been fishing for the Atlantic salmon with various uh, crankbaits, but this one seems to be working the most popular. Uh, the thirty foot four out hook. So. Yeah, we'll, we'll do a bit of uh, spinning with that, a bit of crankbaiting with that, and uh, hopefully get some nice Atlantic salmon. I've got, well, I've got a heavy setup for uh, a float, but not be using that up here, I don't think. Maybe, well, maybe, don't know. And for the Northern Pike, 
Uh, I'm using the Phoenix 14 foot down, which you really need up here if you're fishing from the, the bank, if you're going for the northern pike, because you need the length of the rod to give you a, a good cast. You need to be casting, I think it's 170 feet or so. <coughs> Excuse me. It's got maximum line weight, 22 pounds. It's a march rod, so march rods I'll, I'll cast further than, uh, than uh, casting rods and mostly any other rods. Uh, so yeah, 22 pounds. Uh, the, the reel is a CCO Omnivolt 5000. Uh, maximum drag 18.7 and mono 14 which I think is 16 yep mono 14 16 pounds so again the line is the weakest link uh, leader depth set to 32 inches you know, pear shape flow uh, number 4 hook and shiners pike love these things northern pike love the the shiner so it's uh, it's good fun and also the Atlantic salmon. You can fish for Atlantic salmon, but I prefer to use a crankbait. It's, I think it's much easier. This is slightly lighter than the than the uh, this setup, so I prefer to use this for the Atlantic salmon. Atlantic salmon is a is a f good fighting fish and it's fast. It's, uh, it's like a rocket, but again, so is the Atlantic pike. Being it, it kind of. It'd be frustrating sometimes because it's like nibble, 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 chasey, chasey, more nibble, nibble, you know, float goes backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, and you think, come on, come on. And then all of a sudden it's like a rocket, the pikes strike really, really, really hard and, and off they go. So it's a good bit of sport fishing up here, I do like it, I do like coming up here just for a, a, a bit of fishing, so what we'll do is... Uh, We'll get back to the map and we'll, uh, I think, and go back here, go fishing, and then I'll have, oh, I need to have a look at the next day. So it's cloudy, snow, dawn snow. It's a sure sign of great fishing in winter. Try fishing around caverns and areas with steep bottom terrain. Well, this this lake is 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 deep. It's like mega deep. I mean, you cast your your lure in. You go downstairs, talk to the missus for half an hour, make a cup of tea, uh, go out, have a few beers, come back, and your your lure still sinking to the bottom. It's uh, it's one of the the deepest places for for fishing, I think, in uh, fishing planet. Could be wrong. So we'll uh, I'll fast forward it on to uh, say six a.m. tomorrow, uh, and then we'll we'll have a look, see what we'll we'll go for. So six a.m. for a time. Yep, extend. We want to stay a little bit more. Let's try and cut some of these. Uh, Lake Trout and uh, Atlantic Salmon and Northern Pike. It's not the best place to come in uh, Barnum for XP and cash, but it's it's decent enough. Yeah, I mean the the best place is it is the Atlantic Pike and uh, Vincent Croy Lake. That's the that's the place to go for. <coughs> Excuse me. That's the place to go for for farming, uh, cash and XP. But what we'll try, I think, we'll use this uh, medium spoon, one and a half inch four out hook. It seems to be the, the killer around here. And let's also use the two, tell me I've lost it, oh, here it is. The two ounce spoon, uh, six out hook, which, I think before before recent patches, all you used to get was uh, was trophy and unique uh, trout on it, but not anymore. I mean, I tried this yesterday and was catching all sorts of different sizes of lake trout. So uh, 
We'll try. We'll give this fella a go. The, the one and a half ounce. Four dot hook. And uh, we'll see. We'll see how we get on. Still got to get myself a boat and get all that sorted out. But as you can see, there's a couple of guys here already. You can see their names stand here. So basically, there's only one place uh, where you spawn. And basically, that's just over there next to the along from the campfire uh, if you're wanting to fish uh, lake trout you stand at the edge of the corner of the pier here and cast between excuse me guys cast between this rock here and that tree there so you've got this area here I mean there's there's lake trout all over but this is where they're mostly concentrated in this area I think there's a a river or something that flows down off the, the mountains into here and the trout tend to like uh, hanging around those kind of places. As you see there's a there's a marker out there, one of the guys, uh, Leo, uh, showed me the marker where he got a 55 pound uh, unique late trout which is a, it's a fair size beastie. So again if you're fishing for late trout this is the, the area to go. If you're fishing for Atlantic salmon uh, let me think now. It's this tree here that you aim for, and basically you'll catch Atlantic salmon from here. This tree, a sort of brown tree, basically all the way, all the way, basically up the lo up the lake. You'll get Atlantic salmon. You'll also get. Uh, let's see what other species there are. Brook trout, the burbot, ugh, they're a pain in the ass. They they uh, they hang around the jetty or the dock, whatever you want to call it, uh, and they they'll take anything that goes kind of past them, basically. So not really fishing for them. They don't really give you much return. Uh, Lake chub, I don't know. I don't know if I've caught one of these yet. So I maybe need to, to look to find a place where to catch them and. But the main three fish I'm coming here for is the, is the Atlantic salmon, the lake trout. I've got to find this fella yet, this lake white fish. I think I know where I'm got to, but I think I need a boat to get across to the other side, uh, one of the campfires, and do a bit of fishing from there. And the northern pike. That's the three fish that we're coming to get. Splake, yeah, if I get one of them on the way, yeah, fine. Quite happy with that. I've got a trophy, but haven't got a unique. I haven't got any times or that for the splake. I'd need to check the the fishing planet Uber sheet to check that out. Uh, and white sucker, don't know what that is. And also yellow perch, but no, we're not really interested in any of these. I've caught a couple of these up here before, but these are the most northern pike, lake trout, and. Atlantic salmon. Brook trout's a nice fish as well, but I've got a trophy, one of them, so I'm not really all that interested in fishing for them. But I think you can get the the lake trout. No, the lake trout. The, oh, Jesus. What was that again? Uh, the brook trout. Uh, if you go stand that corner of the jetty and cast towards that tree with a, some crankbait, I think. The northern pike, you need to you need to walk all the way up to the top there and cast. As you can see, there's the, the I think that's the, the dam, uh, the reservoir, it then flows down into the valley. There's a tree, there it is on the, is it that one? No, there it is, that tree, broken tree on the other shore, and that tree there. You cast in between, I'll show you later when I go and try some and get some uh, northern pike. But this place is, is lovely, I, I like coming up here, it really is quite nice. Little, uh, little log cabins and that, and you know, you're surrounded by some really nice... Nice looking scenery, a couple of little campfires as I suppose as markers really. Uh, but yeah, 
it's good good fighting fish up here so it's good fun so we'll give it a go and we'll see it's really really deep if i pick up bring up the map i'll show you where we are that's where we are we're standing on a jetty here and uh effectively you can't really get much further than than well i normally get just about to this mark here maybe a little bit short of it uh, but you can't really get access to this as, as it's all covered in ice as you can see there's the the, the ice and sort of there so and it kind of goes all the way around to the shore and then there's a little break there in the ice but i think it's the campfire it's kind of melt melts it and then the ice starts again and then it's a bit there i think over there is for the white or oh, white whatever it was can't remember and I think the campfire again is melted ice, so you can take your kayak and then go across and get on the other side and fish for that fish, I think. Not too sure, never tried it. Anyway, enough of my babbling and we'll, we'll do some do some fishing. Oh, the wrong button. And as I said, casting between that tree and this rock, so... We'll give it a go for a middle using this one and a half ounce medium spoon four out hook so we'll let it sink this side of the of the marker is quite shallow as you can see it does take a bit of time for your for your lure to get here and what you do is it's a three speed stop and go so trout have got really really good eyesight so you really need to try and just take it nice and gently nice and easy for it to Try and get them to come and have a nibble on your on the spoon. So we'll give it a go. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But the only thing about fishing this area is here, there's a lot of snags, and it can be very frustrating sometimes because nine times out of ten you're in the snag. See, there we go. We're getting and fake bites as well. You get a lot of fake bites in this corner of the. And it's really the only place. Well, it's not the only place, but it's the best place. Oh, thank you. Yeah, snugged. It's the best place to get uh, lake trout. But they are all over the lake, but this is where they're most commonly... Where they all gather. So everybody comes to this corner and, and casts down towards uh, that marker, effectively. So hopefully, we'll maybe get one or two and let you see how things go. They are a good fighting fish, I mean it. I've had some. Ah, it's so frustrating. I've had some small lake trout that have given me a real good fight. And then some other bigger lake trout, like my, my unique one. Uh, not the, the last one I caught, but the very first one I caught was, I think it was about 44 pounds. It just comes straight up. Straight up from the depths. Just reeled it straight in. Never gave me any fight whatsoever. And yet the next fish I caught was half the size and it bottled like a madden. So, as I say, I think I'm not 100% sure about that. We'll just reel this in now. I've never had anything at past basically 50 feet, so. Oh, that wasn't as good a cast. You'll see now this time it, it'll take a little bit longer for the, for the spoon to hit the bottom because it's deep. It's a deep, deep lake. And I, I have... I have on the odd occasion uh, had a, a lake trout hit the, the, the spoon as it's heading down and sometimes I'll give it a little twitch and bang you know and it's off so but there's a lot of there's a lot of fish in this uh, in this lake and hopefully I'll be able to catch some But yeah, it's just a 
Yep, here we go. Three speed stop and go. Oh, this looks like a decent sized fish. But you know if you've got a big lake trout when it comes up, it doesn't come up with the, out of the water much. There you go. See, it was just a little show out of the water just to say that I'm not happy. It's, I think this is my favourite fish in the, in the game. I mean, it's, it's just a... It's a beautiful, uh, beautiful fish. It really is. Well, there's the first one, nearly 13 pounds, which is, which is just a, a tiddler compared to some of the, uh, some of the, the, the big lake trout that you can get, the big unique lake trouts that you can get here. Well, it would be nice to, to catch one but I'm not too sure the times are the, the unique times uh, for when it's said to be snowing I think it's quite cold as well oh no it's a south easterly wind 30, 30 degrees for Alberta that's uh, that's quite warm well, again we'll just do this uh, a nice and gentle retrieve Right, I've got good eyesight, so you don't want to be rattling this in like a rocket, just a, a nice and steady, slow stop and go. Normally this is a trick. We'll see if we can get a few of these and then we'll maybe try see if we could hit the uh, Atlantic Salmon, which uh, they're like rockets. Once they get to the, the to the surface or near the surface, it's uh, I've lost quite a few because they, they're they're quite clever at spitting the lure out if you don't keep uh, tension on the line enough. I lost a few uh, last night when uh, when I fished here. Oops, fake bites. because uh, I wasn't paying attention and, or I was probably too tired. I probably just wasn't paying enough attention and they they try and you, you can see them jumping over to the right there, the uh, Atlantic Salmon. But you'll see, once we get into them, you'll see just how quick they are when you get them near the top. You, you've got to be at your... have your wits about you to, to make sure that they don't get a bit of loose line and the, the spit the, the spit the lure out. I just kind of alternative, alternative, alternate between sort of the middle, that marker and slightly to the right of the marker. That's but the three places that I'll, that I'll try and cast. But there's not much of an area, but there's enough. You'd be surprised with just between these three, or or this small area, that just how much uh, lake trout there is here. And there's some big ones. Yeah, as I said, I've been spilled here before. Yeah, fake bite, getting stuck. And broke my reel and my rod and all sorts of hurt. And also, the I stopped fishing here for a bit as well because what was happening is around about here, about 120 meters, you were getting huh? you're getting snagged like that. And then what was happening is when you were trying to break free from the the snag, and your lure eventually did come loose. It would fly off all the way up to the moon, but in the last patch they fixed it. So you would you would basically cast out, get snagged, the lure would fly off to the moon, you would need to quit the game, you would start the game again, come back here, cast again, get snagged, and the lure would fly off to the moon again. It was frustrating as hell, it really was, because 
Well, for me it was because I like fishing for these lake trout. I mean, it's nothing fancy. It's just a, a high out of the lure and a, a steady uh, three speed stop and go. Again, stuck. You would think, you know, rather than fixing the snag problem with it shooting away off into the into the, the outer Hebrides you would you would think that they would take away the snag because everybody fishes here for the lake trout so, but no oh. right okay I'll, I'll see you in five okay is my wife just away to bed I didn't realise it was getting uh... oh no it's still quite early it's into the back of town She's up a bit earlier than I am, so she's uh, she always goes to bed a bit earlier. Well, most nights anyway. Not at the weekend, but certainly through the week. So yeah, but I was here we go. I was saying it's just a, a nice and steady, gentle stop and go. Come on, come on. Coming in pretty quick. See what I mean? Sometimes they just come right up. Whoa, out of the water, just like that. Okay, it's a bit smaller this time. Ten pounds. But I'm surprised. But they are a good fight in fish. I mean, the, the, the bigger ones uh, will spill you. That's for sure. But yeah, they're, they're decent. But ah, oh, yeah, getting back to you, you think rather than fixing the, the, the snag off to the moon th thing, they would just fix the snag, they would take it away because everybody fishes this corner for lake trout. And everybody must get as frustrated as I do. Oh, and you another one? Oh, that was quick. Hopefully this will be a bit bigger. We're getting up into the peak times uh, for fishing, so. This is a, a heavy setup I'm using, guys. You've got to f come here with a heavy setup for lake trout, or otherwise you're going to be in a whole lot of pain. Atlantic salmon, not so much. You could use medium. I think the biggest, the, the trophy one gets maybe 25 to 30 pounds, maybe. So you could use a, a, a decent medium, a decent medium setup for the uh, uh, XP. Not too great. I mean, I've caught a few of them, so it's diminished returns. But gosh. I mean, it's nowhere near as good as uh, St. Croix for the, the Northern Pike. But, yeah, decent enough, decent enough fish. Hopefully there'll be one or two more uh, bigger ones for us to get our teeth into. Hopefully. Oh, hey, hi Lonnie, how you doing, mate? Oh, as you could see, I mean, getting into the, the deeper part of the, the lake and it does take a while for your lure. And it's not a light lure, it, you know, it's one and a half ounces, it's a fairly heavy. And it does take its time to get down there. But yeah, Fish and Planet need to get rid of the snag. Or the snag points, and it would be... It would be... What's the words I'm looking for? Nicer's not really. It would be a better fishing experience if they got rid of those snag points. Because you just get into a wee rhythm and then all of a sudden snagged and then you get back into a wee rhythm again and then there's another snag point and you think, oh, come on. Just fix it. 
get rid of the snags and let's or maybe they've put it there so it makes it a bit more difficult for you to catch them who knows all I know is I like fishing for the the lake trout especially when you get into the 20s 30s 40s and 50 pounders that it's a, a strong fish or as the Russians would say, strunk trout. But you will, you will earn a decent amount of of money. But I would say, don't don't come here until. You're at least, I don't know. So at least you can get a heavy setup. But otherwise, you'll be, uh, you'll not be liking it. You'll not be having much fun. That's for sure. Tell you that's your experience. Give me two minutes, people. I'm just gonna go and say uh, good night to my wife. I'll be, uh, I'll be right back. Okay, that's me back. That's it all sorted, tucked in. So yeah, it's good, it's a nice place. It's, it's, it is quite expensive to come up here. I think it's 10,000 and then 8,000 for a thick bite uh, or a bit of lag. I think it's 10,000 to travel here. Eight thousand for a for a twenty four hour permit in real life for a for an advanced permit because you, you want an advanced permit here you want to be able to keep all your your trophies and uniques and I think each day after that is only a thousand so if you're coming here my advice to you is of a at least a a heavy setup. If you're going to go for a trophy and unique look trout and bring the biggest fish net, fish keeping net that you, you can. I wouldn't advise you to come here unless you're level 30, 32, something like that. But otherwise you're not going to make, make your money or you're going to have to stay for days and days and days to break free or break free I think that was Freddie Mercury wasn't it eh uh, to break even or otherwise there's no point in fishing you know no point in fishing it no point in fishing if you're not going to make any money I suppose it's the enjoyment side of it as well so you know make sure that you're I would say at least 30, 32. I think you can come here when you're level 20. I'll check that when uh, the next time I'll, I bring the line in. But I wouldn't advise you to come up here that early because I don't think you can get at that level the required kit. Or not unless you'd be... Uh, I say a fuck. Not unless you buy a DLC uh, heavy setup. 
That way you can then come here. Uh, I got gifted this DLC, so I was I was quite lucky. But I'd already decent heavy stuff uh, by grinding through the game. To fish here, but I wouldn't advise coming here. Uh, any lower than level 30, purely because of the size of the keep net and for making money and experience there's other places that are far more better places to go and come here but it is, it's beautiful, I must admit I do like this place alright Kess, how you doing mate? I've got one of them hearts as well, I need to with a light on. I just about shit myself the other night when, when uh, it was night fishing and I turned around and I got blinded. I thought there was aliens or something landing. I was like, whoa, what was that? And it was a, a guy with one of these lights on. I was waiting to get beamed up. Hey, hey the guys are in. Hey. Hey, Starkiller, how you doing? Hey. Well, it's a, how's it going, guys? Where'd all the battleships go? Ah, uh, they'll be tomorrow. I'll do battleships tomorrow, or maybe later on, I don't know. We'll see. I've not played battleships in a while, so I'll be well rusty. I might have a wee go in the battleships later. We'll see how it goes, see how the fishing goes, see how long I play on the my fishing game. As I said, I've not played a battleships for oh, three weeks now, maybe, maybe a bit longer than that. Been playing this game. It's I find it a bit more relaxing, and there's no salt in this game, none whatsoever. It's all fresh water, and the guys are uh, are really helpful as well in this game. If you ask anybody for a bit of advice. Uh, you'll always get a reply from somebody and saying, yeah, do this or do that or hold on, I'll come and help you, I'll show you or, or you need to be doing this or not like battleships where all you do is you get morning twats that are normally, normally dead anyway in the first five minutes saying, oh, you should have done this and you should have done that and I understand those guys to be honest. But hey ho, there's always the, the keyboard warriors. Get behind the keyboard and you're a big hard man. And there you go. But this game, there's nothing like that in this game and it's nice and relaxing. And it was Dirt that got me into this game. He streamed it uh, and I thought, well, I'll give this a watch. And I thought, well, I used to fish years ago. So, yeah, I'm going to have a... And it's free to play. And there's no pay to win, I don't think, in this. There's no any killer baits or I think the killer baits are that you you earn them you can't actually buy them I think there's a a brand called X series I think so that's one of those snags again you see you lose it you lose the rhythm and it takes you a wee bit to get your stop and go going again Maybe it's just there to try and put you off a bit. I don't know. And hopefully we'll get a nice couple of more lake trout and then we'll try for some Atlantic salmon. Right, let's have a look. 
<clears throat> here you go, level 22, you need to be to get here, but I would advise against not coming because you, you've not got a big enough net to really maximize uh, the cash and the XP. So I would probably stay uh, in Florida and then try and get to uh, Michigan, St. Croix Lake. Once you get there, you shouldn't have any cash worries or any XP worries whatsoever. The Northern Pike just plus I think my biggest Northern Pike uh, Michigan is, is 34 pounds uh, unique Northern Pike I don't think you get uniques here I think you maybe get trophies here but no unique but they're, they're nowhere near as big so and I think there's more more of a variety in uh, Michigan as well I think there's double the amount of fish the fish there But once you get yourself a decent setup and a big enough net, then come here and have a bit of fun with the, the lake trout and the, and the salmon. But it's nice and easy, just take it nice and steady. Don't try and rattle it in like a rocket or the, the trout will not go for it. That's my uh, experience anyway, I'm maybe, I'm maybe wrong. See the salmon jumping just to the right there. I'm going to try for them in a bit. I'll try a few more casts. That guy, yeah, 22 pound. It's decent fish. And trophy lake trout. They get up to about 60 something pounds here, I think. Could be wrong. I know they're, they're 50 plus anyway. Right, come on. Give us a nice fishy. I'm having a... I'm having a few beers tonight because I've got no work tomorrow, so just a, just a couple. I might play some warships later, but I doubt it. I'll probably leave it till tomorrow. I'm actually out tomorrow, so it'll be later on tomorrow evening before I get a chance to. Here we go. Oh, see, that's that fake bite. Keeps on catching me. You think, yeah, we're into a fish, but no. I think we're in the peak time. It was like a, a little bit like this uh, last night when I was testing it out. I fished for, for two hours in game, which is half an hour uh, real time. Without a, without a fish, without a bite, without anything. And I was sitting here moaning, 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 and I was away to give up, and I thought, right, I'll have one more cast. And bang, I got that unique uh, lake trout, so. Weird. Really weird. Yeah, 
it'd be nice to to get one uh, on stream. Even a trophy. Here we go. Hard to judge the size sometimes. I don't think this is all that big. Yeah, could be wrong. It's coming straight up. Probably about 12 pounds. And yeah, we'll keep it. Keep it within its money. Cash money record is B double low, I would say. Or B dubs. Come on, guys. Give us a big one. Trophy yellow perch. Oh god, it's better. Oh no, it's that fake bite again. Why would you put fake bites in the game? It's so frustrating. You think, oh yeah, you got a fish. Oh, no, no, you've not. I need to concentrate a bit more on my, my presentation. I never seem to get two dots up here. Always seems to be the one. And yet when you watch other people's videos, you're doing just exactly the same as what they're doing. But it seems to work anyway. I seem to get the fish, so... Same. We'll, we'll have one or two. We'll just check the times. Yeah, I we're just coming out of the peak zone now. We'll do a couple of more casts and then we'll try for the Atlantic salmon. I saying you've got to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. Oh, it's a lovely bottle of cider, that. I'm a cider drinker. I like my cider. Okay, here we go. I'll probably not get a... a trophy or a unique. No, I think we're outside the... the zone. There's still big fish. Bite again. Fishing for the Atlantic Salmon's a bit. Yeah. Is a uh, slightly easier. Well, I think so anyway, especially if you're using the, the crankbait. Because you just hoy it in and reel it in. But it's fairly straightforward fishing up here, which is, uh, which I like. Nothing too complicated. As you can see, it's a bit shallower this side. 
of the of that marker. I need to get rid of some of my markers because I was wanting to put down uh, some other markers, but they're wanting bait coins for it. So I think you're allowed a maximum. You get free, boop, yeah, eleven free marker slots. And I actually thought it was per lake or pond or whatever, but no, it's, it's for all of them. So uh, if I want to put down any more markers, it's going to cost me a a bait coin, which I don't know, want to part with my bait coins at the moment, because you've got to spend them wisely. So I'll need to go back and pain in the arse. Go back and uh, look at some of the lakes where I've put markers down and decide whether I want to to keep them or not. And so I can free up some slots from some other places because I, I want to go to uh, Alaska next. I mean, I've been up there once before. Or maybe not. Maybe go to uh, California by the, by the dam. It's... Uh, it's good for uh, the Chinook salmon and uh, what else is there? The steelhead, steelhead trout, or is it steelhead salmon? Steelhead trout, I think it is. Uh, what else is there there? There's saw a few other f big fish. Can I remember now? But it's good fun as well because I you use the. Uh, Oh, there's a sturgeon. Sturgeon there as well. Or is it the gar? No, the gar's in Louisiana, I think. Must be the sturgeon. Right, last cost for the lake trout. But, uh, I, I like using the top water lures for the, uh, the Chinook. Salmon and the uh, steelhead out. Yeah, a bit of fun. So I don't know where to go next. If you've got any suggestions, any ideas that you want me to, any f types of fish that you want me to fish for, please don't say perch or minnows. <laughs> Leave a comment below, and I'll uh, I'll see what I can do. Come on, but yeah, maybe head to either California to the Dam in California. I forget what it's called, or to Alaska, which is called oh. I'd be making it up if I knew, if I didn't know, or if I try to say something, I should say. I'd be making it up. I've only been up there once, and that was to get a trophy Chinook. But there's Sockeye, there's, oh, what do you call them? Dolly, Dolly Varden. Uh, there's also. There's quite a lot of bull trout. There's a whole heap, right? One more. I said I was only going to have one more, but I think there might be just one sneaking about over here. You know, you get that little guy inside your head saying, just one more cast, but just cast over this area here because there might be one, two, three, four, maybe. There might be one just there, but I'm, I'm getting out of the best times to be catching these fish is there a lag or a bit of fake fake bite but yeah let me know in the comments guys uh, if there's anything specific that you want me to try and fish for or a place you want me to go and uh if I've not been there or 
caught it before. I'll do a bit of research and find out how to get them and, and go there. I mean, the, the money thing is, is not a problem because, as I said, all I need to do is, is a couple of hours uh, fishing by myself, uh, not streaming or anything. And uh, it's in Croy Lake and I'll make a shed load of money. So I'm quite happy to go to two or three different places and buy the permits and do the travelling and Right, well that hunch was a uh, was a no no, so we'll try I'll try a look I'll switch my Go away. I'll switch it to my rod number two and we'll, we'll try and see if we can get I was just checking to make sure I had the right crank boot on and we'll just fire it out this way so from that tree there where I've just casted to to, to way around by the other campfire on the right hand side that's the first campfire you see there's another one further round to the to the right and basically you'll get uh, you'll get lake trout as well but that's where you want to go for the Atlantic salmon I, I tend to go in between that tree that I've just casted it and that uh, that campfire there that we can see on the right I tend to work sort of that area so it's a uh, one speed just drag it in with a crankbait it's quite successful with this last day. I had a, a couple of decent trophies, one at 21 uh, pounds and one at 25 and boy oh boy they gave me a good uh, a good run for my money especially because uh, I think Mark's line here I've got on is 20 pounds so it was uh, it was pretty close yeah so between that tree here but I also do the odd cast you know, between the two campfires. I just kind of vary it a little bit. But crankbait fishing is quite easy. As I say, you just... You just kind of hoi it out and, and... And grind in. There's no sort of striking because the... The, the fish... Will strike the lure at speed and that will get them on. And then it's just a part of getting them in. But these things go... Well, hopefully I'll get a couple... These things go like rockets, and I mean rockets. Especially when you get them close to the surface. I had a good few of them last night, but we're not fishing, and, and it was a different day. It was a, a cloudy, cloudy day without any snow. I think what it's saying just now is that it's cloudy and simulating snowfall. I don't know what the Uber sheet says about snowfall because when you look at the Uber sheet all you get is sunny, partly cloudy, cloudy and rainy. They'll never come under the rainy, the rainy part of the, uh, God, come all the way up here to fish for yellow, for trophy yellow parts. Oh, expensive. Expensive perch. Make the most of it. You need to stay about a month before you get make your money back. See the salmon jumping again on the right hand side. There's fish all over this lake, but they seem to be avoiding me like the plague at the moment. As I said, maybe not the bestest of times, so maybe I'll give it another give it another 10, 15 minutes or so and then I'll I'll forward the time on. As I say, I'm not a pro at this game, I'm, I'm a newbie, I know a little bit about it, I know enough about it to, to do a bit of fishing here and there, but if anybody's got any tips, hints or tricks that they would like to share then leave a comment. This is where I got these uh, splakes, it was running about here, it was like, right I'm going to bring it in and then bang all of a sudden I was like oh right okay. But 
uh, as I said, the crank weight's pretty much no brain. And there's a there's a tournament as well for the the Atlantic salmon up here called Red. Is it Big Red Fish? I think the competition is. But they opened it up to the amateurs. Or <laughs> well, yeah, I suppose I'm pretty much an amateur, but I'm a level forty amateur. But I think the the, the highest rank or level that you, you could be was thirty four. So they wouldn't have let me do the competition, but. Hopefully next week or, or whenever it's back on again, I'd, I'd like to do this competition for the Atlantic Salmon. It's a cracking fighting fish, it really is. And hopefully I'll get one or two so I could, I could show you. And the, the burbot sit here as well. They sit right here. And all the way along this dock. Burbot sit. I'm sure they sit some other places as well, but you think, oh, you're just about to bring your line in, and the next thing this thing leaps out of the water and grabs your lure, and you think, well, okay. I didn't do anything to catch it, you know, get a couple of hundred bucks from it. Which is better than a poke in the eye with a sharp stick. <laughs> oh, fake bait. Come on. Oh, pardon me. I suppose drinking Lucasade before I had some some cider is a uh, Giving me the, the burps, I'm afraid. I need to watch my line as well, it's down to 27%, so roughly when it, when it gets to about 10%, I like to swap it out because if you get into, whoa, if you get into a, a big fish, and your fight lasts quite a while, then it's a chance that, you know, you can get your line down to, you know, one, two percent and you're getting close to losing your fish. Come on, Simon, I'm normally hooked a couple by now. It must just be the time of day. We'll go fast forward it on here. But I'll have one more cast over towards the, the, the other campfire on the right hand side there. And if nothing, I'll, I'll change the time. You see, they're actively here. I mean, they're, they're diving about. and Yeah, a poor time to be fishing. I'd rather it was a a cloudy day rather than a rainy day, or even a sunny day. Maybe I should have forwarded it on to a more suitable time, or a more suitable day before I started streaming, but hey-ho, learning. It's little steps. Yeah, the bike's fun up here too. Normally, I'm sort of... Anywhere between four and six pounds. I've had a couple at, at eight, nine, ten, I think, up here. But nothing much bigger than that. If it's the big pipe, pipe, bleh, pike you want to go for is uh, St. Croix in Michigan. That's the daddies. So much versatile fish in there. It's, it's probably... My favourite place to fish, but the lake trout are my favourite fish to fish, if that makes any sense. Yeah, 
Don't write last cast and then I'll change the, the time. And hopefully be able to get a couple of Atlantic salmon. And show you guys just how fast these things go. There must be the, the cruise missile of the fish. And they change direction so quickly. I see they're laughing at me, they're jumping all over the place and they're just ignoring my my crankbait. say one more one more it's like come on you know you want to There we go. Now this seems like a late trout. Oh no. Salmon. Yep. Yep. The salmon. Here we go. Not a big one though. Yep. Seven point. Seven and a half pounds. So that is not too bad. Decent, decent enough money for the size of the fish and yeah, XP, yeah, not too bad, but you can see just how quick and agile they are compared to the, the lake trout. It's like, uh, I mean, lake trout are probably like, yeah, I don't know, on a scale of 1 to 10. Two, three, four, maybe. Atlantic salmon are like fifty. Once you get any a decent, a decent one, you just see how quickly they're changing directions and you've got to be, got to be paying attention. That's for sure. I mean, I, I lost a, a couple last night. Really just because I was I was thinking about other things. I'll just check the time. See where we are in the time frame. Right, okay, we're coming. I'll maybe fast forward it to the 5 p.m. And hopefully that will be a bit more a bit more rewarding. And a couple of more Atlantic salmon. And maybe another lake through it. Or trout, hmm. and then we're gonna try for the northern pike on the on the bobber. Oh, well, here in Scotland we say float, call them floats, but there we go. Yeah, this looks like a decent fish. I know these guys in the states say bobbers. See that one's taking line off me, so it's it'll be ten pounds probably. You can see just 
Oh, th there must be like the F1, -er, the Formula 1 -er a fish. You see just how quickly they can they can skate across the lake and change and change direction. And how quickly they come in and the, the, the distance that they cover in such a such a short time. Well, that was relatively easy. Huh? Eight pounds. Eight and a half pounds. Yeah, I mean, it, the XP on them's pretty good, and the, the, the cash on them's pretty good, you know, so it's... I don't know if it would be worth coming up here just to purely to... Uh, Farm the, uh, the salmon. As I said, I don't know enough about that. But as I said, didn't come up here at level 22. Because you, you've not got a big enough net. You've not got a heavy enough setup to come up here and, and, and fish it to the full to enjoy it. So... Don't come here before you're level 30, that's all I would say. Oh, hey Dirt. Welcome to the stream, man. How's the warships going? Are you still dealing, dealing pain? I do love my warships. I'm not. All the, I'm not all that. Uh, I'm not all that good, good at it, but I do like playing it. <laughs> there's nothing. Uh, there's nothing more satisfying than being in your battleship and seeing a cruiser, you know. <coughs> uh, <coughs> anywhere between 15 and 20 kilometres away. And you just open up full salvo and the next thing is, is, is history. It's a very satisfying, satisfying feeling. But I play a, a, a cruisers quite a lot in World of Warships, especially uh, the German cru whoa, yeah, fake bite. German cruiser uh, Konigsberg, which is a tier five light cruiser, uh, six inch guns. Uh, it's got a long range. It's a uh, sixteen point three kilometer range for a for a tier five ship. Quite quick firing. The HE mm, so so, not not too bad. If they, they actually got tweaked, it uh, made it a lot better than it used to be. Uh, a few patches ago, uh, so that your chance of fire is uh, is a bit higher. You don't have to put, uh, oh, what do you call it now? Oh, look, there we go, cast off, look, we're away, Whee. I mean, you seen that lure hit the water, but no, 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 no. No. Oh, I did. Oh, we're in the water. It's weird, that. Really weird. Why it landed away over there, I don't know. IFHE, high, inertial fuse, high explosives. Uh, you don't really need to put that on it because of the, the, the penetration of the, the HE on the German line for high explosives is, is, is a bit better than the, any other line except for the British BBs. And the AP on the, the, the Konigsberg is it's pretty devastating if uh, if another cruiser's giving you a uh, broadside uh, you get a couple of salvos into him and that, that's effectively uh, the end the end of his game. But 
Konigsberg is a uh, is it made of a pub? What, what should I say? Paper mache. I don't know if you guys know what paper mache is, but maybe you do. It's, it's like uh, glue and paper and double-sided sticky tape. If a BB near as much as is looks your way, it's a, it's a detonation. You're just <laughs> completely destroyed. So pros and cons. I suppose. I've recently just unlocked the Cleveland, I think. Cleveland? Tier 6 American light cruiser, so... I've not had a go in that yet, so maybe over the weekend I'll maybe see about moving a captain into it. And the only reason I unlocked it is because there's a split coming with the, the, the US uh, cruiser line. Uh, I think from Tier 6 downwards, so... They're introducing uh, some more ships, and I think the Cleveland is going to go up to tier 8, I think, maybe. But it was originally when it first came out in the world of the warships, and if, I, if I'm correct, the Cleveland was a tier 8. It's just a fire starter, it's an H HE high explosive uh, fire starter. Yeah, but again, it's. Uh, it's a floating citadel, just like the con. Just all like all the light cruisers are floating citadels. Basically, it's not until you start getting up to tier eight, nine, and ten really through through all the all the lines that you you're getting into the heavy cruiser. Uh, but Anna got that far yet in warships. I tend to play well. I haven't even got even got a tier nine ship. I've got tier eight is Bismarck is my biggest. I guess our highest tier, I should say. And it's just a a secondary nutter machine. The, the biz, my Bismarck will spit out shells, secondary shells, uh, up to about, I think it's near, near getting on to 13 kilometres. By the time you put your, your right captain perks on it and a couple of flags on it, So it can be a lot of fun. It can be a lot of fun. It can also be a lot of pain, but it's almost like everything else. But I do like my warships. But this is more relaxing. And and I've just not long gotten into this game. As I said, two or three weeks ago. I watched uh, Dirt play it one, one afternoon. I thought, yeah, quite fancy giving this a go. And... I've been hooked, hooked, pardon the pun, ever since, so I do enjoy playing this game. I, I like the technical things behind it, but yeah, I've never really grasped the technical things of warships. I have in some of it, and I haven't on other parts. And I think I touched on this the other night, but you know, I couldn't tell you what shell would penetrate what, you know what I mean? I mean if, I, if I'm in a BB, then I know that I could, I could waste all the cruisers. And hurt a few of the other BBs, you know, but apart from that, as the mighty Jingles would say, is broadside to a BB, and that's a paddling. Right, we'll try, uh, we'll try these lake trout again. Oh, hello guys. See if we can get any, uh, I did see somebody with a float. Where did it go? He's maybe into a fish. Oh no, there it is, it's away out there. He must be uh, fishing for the Atlantic salmon and using a float, because I, 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 I think you would probably need the, the biggest leader depth in the world to get to the bottom, to get to the, the lake trout. I think the the longest leader length you could do on a float setup is uh, is ninety nine inches or two hundred and fifty something centimeters if you are using the the metric rather than the imperial. But I don't fancy fishing with uh, with the, the bobber or the float. Uh, 
for Atlantic Salmon here uh, with the setup that I've got here because it's only sixteen pounds and uh, I don't think that's strong enough. I mean, I've got twenty pounds on uh, on that rod I was just using with a uh, crankbait, so I'm happy enough to go at them with uh, twenty pounds, but not sixteen. A fake bite again. I've never normally caught them this close in. Yeah, I did see that uh, dark. Yep, I did see it earlier on, but I didn't watch it, so uh, I'll probably give it a watch later on tonight. Yeah, it did say that. The float is for when you're drinking beer. Oh, fishing long. <laughs> yes, it is. Well, I, I like this is this area as well because it gives me a time to, you know, waiting on your lure to sink. <laughs> I can have a swig at my cider. <laughs> yeah, the game is peaceful. I do like this game. It's nice and relaxing. And there's a, there's a bit of mechanics behind it as well, which uh, which I enjoy. But yes, I did see that uh, on the, the World Gaming website uh, explaining damage. So I think I know enough about it. I think I know enough that... Uh, like say if you're shooting at one area, once that area gets saturated, uh, it's taking as much damage as it possibly can. It, you could, could still keep on firing shells. Maybe you could correct me if I'm wrong here, that you could keep on firing shells into that area and you won't score uh, points for it. That's a fake bite again. So, but yeah, I will look at that uh, video. It's it's about time that they brought something out like that because it a lot of people didn't didn't really understand uh, how the damage system works and especially I did at the beginning as well because they say you would fire and you'd be thinking well I hit him broadside blah 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 but after the damage such yeah there you go yeah 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 cheers for confirming that dirt. So yeah, I will watch that video. It's good that they're bringing it out though and explaining it to, to people. I mean, they should have brought it out a while ago, really, to be honest. Because once that part of the ship has been sat, the, all the, the points have been saturated and... Yeah. You really want to be firing at other parts of the ship, but yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. They were a bit lazy. But sometimes in the in the heat of the battle, it, you know what I mean. I mean, I, sometimes I watch. I'll play a a couple. Of, I mean, I always record all my World of Warship games. Uh, and when I look back maybe the next day I think oh, you could have should have done this or you should have done that or what did you do that for it but sometimes in the heat of the battle you you know what I mean you just go with your gut instinct and sometimes it's just it's the complete wrong the complete wrong thing to do you know what I mean hindsight's a great thing you know when you look back think oh I should have done this should have turned left should have turned right or but sometimes you just get a bit excited like I do and the, the most or the, the, the easiest thing to do is that you do the complete opposite and you pay for it you know like say, I know that like say if a, a CV, if I'm in my cruiser, 
trying to torpe, you know, you need to slow down and turn into them, into the torpedoes, you know, to try and minimise how much you're going to take or if you could avoid them completely. But I think, well, why didn't I slow down? I turned in towards them, but I didn't slow down, you know, you know, and you think, right, I'll do that the next time. And then you look at your next video and you think, oh, well, I didn't do it again. And you know what I mean? The CV got me or whatever, or I don't know, but... There is, there is a, a bit of pain in that game as well, but there's also a lot of sa satisfaction from it as well, so. I do like playing my, but hopefully I'll, I'll maybe stream some uh, this weekend. On warships. And just probably make an ass of myself, but hey ho. Oh, come on, where's the fish gone? Or am I not paying enough attention? Am I just traveling a lot of shite again? I don't know. Come on, give me a decent lake trout. If not, we'll try for the Atlantic salmon again. And then we'll, we'll head up to the... Uh, I don't know what way we're facing, so if it's a westerly, so we'll head up to the east side of the loch, loch, pond, whatever, eh, hey, and we'll try the northern pike on the, on the float, with a shiner, you need to watch, so if you let it drift too far to the right, there's a, there's a, a, a tree stump that sticks out, uh, salmon, uh, pike, uh, trout, uh, a lot of freshwater fish, uh, dirt here. Obviously, I, I live on the coast, but I don't, uh, I don't do sea fishing for like uh, cod or mackerel or there's there's not any bass. Oh, I see that's a fucking fake bite again. Uh, I, I never really did any seawater. I did years and years ago for uh, mackerel and uh, cod and ling and stuff like that. Skate. I always preferred uh, uh, freshwater fishing where we are, where we get a lot of uh, perch, uh, trout, rainbow trout, brown trout, uh, Pike, uh, salmon, Atlantic salmon. Uh, I I used to fish for that kind of stuff when I was when I was a bit younger. I know you like uh, like doing your uh, your uh, saltwater fishing. But I did a bit of saltwater fishing in Florida for uh, for rays uh, for barracuda. Uh, stuff like that. Caught quite a few barracuda. Did a bit of catfish fishing while I was in Florida. Uh, I don't know what kind of catfish it was. Kind of dark looking catfish. Don't know if uh, different species, but yeah. But it was mostly freshwater fishing uh, where I where I live. Uh, dark uh, rivers and lochs. So it's trout, perch, pike. That kind of thing. Salmon. A lot of salmon. Big money here. We've got the spay. Uh, the river spay here. Which is uh, which is only half an hour's drive away. Uh, we've got the, the D and the Don. The river D and the river Don. Which again is, is... I mean, I can get to both of those rivers in 20 minutes. And could be fishing for salmon. But oh yeah, boy, it's expensive. I mean to to get a to get a day's fishing on the D or the Dawn in some prime time area. Oh, you're talking a thousand bucks a day. Yes, it's that expensive. Atlantic salmon. Your freshwater fish get a lot bigger than than ours. Eh. Hey! 
Well, uh, it depends where you fish. I mean, you're, 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 I would probably say your Ave is like, we've got a lot of rainbow trout here now as well. Yeah, they can, if you go up to Loch Tay, uh, your rainbow trout up to 20 pounds, 25 pounds. Your brown trout, typically 10 pounds plus. Uh, your salmon, well, our salmon can go, well, Mahusev, uh, some of the biggest salmon in the world has been caught in Scotland. Uh, what else? Uh, the pike, yeah, some massive pike up here as well. Yeah, 50, 60, 70 pounds plus uh, pike up here as well. But I never really fished for the pike. Yeah, I was more of a... Yes, I. Yeah, yeah, you're right. What the fuck, I. Yeah, a thousand bucks a day. Yeah. Yeah. Just to fish some uh, some prime time real estate for some salmon in. You're not guaranteed, you know? I mean, you, you could probably fish there for... Five, six days and not get a job, you know? And it'd be five, six K out of pocket. Yeah. It's like the grouse, uh, the grouse season, uh, if you go, if you do, I mean, I, I like my shooting as well, I do a lot of shooting. Uh, it starts on uh, the glorious 12th of July, but if you want to do some serious grouse shooting, then again, you're, you're probably 2,000 bucks a day to do some grouse shooting. And then again, you're not guaranteed you're going to get some. Copper Kelly, same thing, you know, which is a, a part of the grouse, or the pheasant, well, I'm not too sure, but even the pheasants, if you want to go shooting pheasants, a driven pheasant day could cost you 500 bucks a day, yeah, yeah, 2k, yeah, oh, and see, I'm not concentrating, sorry, I'm, I'm looking at the chart, more than anything else, yeah, Yeah, salmon, well, what a record salmon been caught in the rivers, just half an hour's drive from where I am, but I would never get onto those beats where they were caught because it's, you've either got to have a silver spoon up your ass, or, uh, <laughs> or know somebody in the know to get an invite, you know what I mean, it kind of works like that. So I, I would probably... On the, on the lesser sort of runs, as they would say, which maybe cost you up to a couple of hundred bucks a day just to fish them. But yeah, there's, there's some beauty of the spay, you know, the, the river spay, I mean, I would never get a position on the river spay, purely because the, the, the waiting list to get on it is, is probably longer than, than I am older, you know what I mean, so... But I have had my, the odd, uh, the Eden, I used to fish the Eden down in Cooper, down in Fife, uh, which is about an hour's drive away from here, an hour and a half. And the Eden, uh, why it's called the Eden, because it's such a beautiful place, uh, like the Garden of Eden, uh, the Eden River. You can get, you can buy a permit for the, the, the River Eden for about $120, uh, a year, but you can go and fish as many times as you want within the the the, the legal times for fishing for the salmon and the, the the sea trout and stuff like that. So there there is places where you can go and get up to sixty seventy pound salmon, you know, for quite a for quite a yeah, you'd be better off going to the fish market, yeah. Yeah, 500 for a, a fat little bird, yeah, yeah. But that's what it's like up here, because, I mean, where else do you go for grouse shooting? You know what I mean? There's, there's only the, the moorlands of uh, England, I think, and uh, up here in Scotland, uh, there's nowhere else in the world you go for grouse. And they've even got a whiskey named after it, you know what I mean? The famous grouse, so... Yeah... 
if there's a if there's a lot of history behind it, which here in Scotland we have got a lot of history, then oh come on, Steve, concentrate on your fishing and shut up a bit. Then it, you'll pay through the nose for it. That's for sure. Right, here we go. Let's get a fish. But I do like my shooting. I like to do uh, uh... Oh, what's that? Have we got something? Got something. Nah. I do uh, I do like to do my deer stalking. I must admit, I do like going shooting. Yeah, my dear. My daughter's not keen on me doing it, but there you go. And that can cost a lot of money as well. No, there's no bears here, dirt. No, nothing like that. No, there's no bears. There's no bears in Scotland. Not unless you go to Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> No, there's no bears in the UK. No, there's no wolves or anything like that. I think the biggest uh, fox. Uh, the, I think there's the lynx. We do have lynx. The wild cat. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. There used to be wolves here years ago, but like a lot of places, they, they, got, uh, they got exterminated effectively. Uh, I'm trying to think. No, fox is about the biggest predatory, or or a, or a wild cat. Forget what they're called. Lynx, maybe the lynx. Yeah, a fish at last. But no, if there was bears up here, I certainly wouldn't go into the woods for a shite. That's for sure. <laughs> there we go. Right, we'll try a wee bit for the the salmon again, the salmon. But the red deer and the, the roe deer uh, are beautiful creatures, you know. The, 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 a red deer stag is a, is a, is a majestic, is a majestic uh, creature, you know. But again, if you want to go shoot a, a red deer stag, which is a trophy stag, whoa, you're... You're a thousand, you're a thousand to two thousand bucks a, a, a pop, you know what I mean? So, it's expensive. Expensive business hunting and it can be done on the cheap, don't get me wrong, it can be. And, uh, but if you've got the cash then, uh, I'm more than willing to take your money off you up here in Scotland, that's for sure. No, no, there's there's no there's no predators for the for the big deer up here, Dirk. I think they are trying to introduce uh, some wolves back into the countryside again up here, but yeah, I'm not too sure how how that would go. Yeah, yeah, that's all I did. I just go shooting for the pot. That's all I ever did was was went shooting for the pot. I never ever. Went shooting for something just uh Okay, I, I had the odd farmer uh, would phone me up and say, you know, that a fox had taken a few of his... A few of his, uh, his chickens or his geese or what have you, and he said, say, would you come over and see if you can try and sort the problem out? There's no eating in foxes, you know, so you would just shoot the fox. would skin it, you know, you could always sell this, the, the, the skin to... Uh, a taxidermist or something. There was there's one up uh, just uh, an hour's drive away from me, and he would take even rabbit skins if I skinned them. You know what I mean? There's a lot of rabbits here, a lot of rabbits. Uh, go. That's a nice uh, Atlantic salmon. And the butcher, the butcher, I'll take your meat from you as well here. So, uh, but I would just shoot for the pot, you know what I mean? Like say, coming up for Christmas time, I would maybe go for a, a, a doe, which is a, it's a female uh, red deer. And uh, to make sure that I had some, uh, 
venison on the table for Christmas time or or if somebody was looking for a bit of venison then but I, I just wouldn't go out discriminately and uh, just shoot for the sake of shooting I always made sure that what a shot I could either I could either eat it you know that day or the next day or the next few days or it would go in the freezer <laughs> <laughs> you get on your horse <laughs> no I, I don't like that I don't like that kind of hunting in fact it's banned here now in the UK and in uh, Scotland well all of UK uh, uh, the, the fox and hounds it's uh, it, it was a few years ago it was passed in parliament uh, banned but it was always done by the snobs it was always done by the people who had uh, the silver spoon stuck up their arses so uh I don't think uh, uh, chasing something shitless till it's, it gives up with exhaustion and then gets mauled to bits by 30, 40 hounds, I, I, I don't, that doesn't cut it with me. And I'm kind of glad it got banned. Uh, but they still do it illegally, unfortunately. Uh, I was brought up on the principle that if you're out hunting something, you take it out cleanly, inhumanely, with one shot. You know what I mean? You got yourself into a position that you are comfortable in taking, that you know you would bring whatever quarry down that you were shooting. And if you weren't comfortable, you wouldn't take the shot. You know what I mean? You'd wait another day. There's always another day. But no, I didn't like the idea of these fucking idiots or fuckwits or, pardon my friends. Riding around laddie daddy on their, on their horses, as I say, and blowing their trumpets with 30 or 40 hounds uh, chasing something that's scared shitless till it's cornered in it and gets mauled to death. No, it's not my my way of hunting. I don't, I, I condone it, you know what I mean? I, I, it's not. And I'm glad it got banned, I really am. Okay, it goes back. Hundreds and hundreds of centuries, you know, it's a tradition here in the UK, but I'm glad they got rid of it. I mean, I can remember taking one guy out shooting, who is a very good, who is actually a, a who owned a gun shop and was very jealous of me that got this land. Uh, I had a friend who lived on the Earl of Contours estate in Inverurie, which is which is half an hour's drive away from me. And this guy who owns the shop, this gun shop, had been trying for years and years and years to get permission to shoot on his land for roe deer, which is a small deer, but a beautiful deer. And he, he never got it. And I managed, through a friend, to get an audience with the uh, the Earl of Kintour, that was his title, the Earl of Kintour, and I, he says to me, he says, look, if you want to shoot deer on this land, give me a three-year plan and come back in a week's time and we'll sit down and discuss it. So I went away and, and, and drew up a three-year cow plan for him because he was having problem. These roe deer were, were out of control. So we were, uh, what was happening was he was getting a a grant from the Forestry Commission to plant trees, young young uh, pine trees, and uh, the roe deer were just coming along and and uh, eating them effectively. So there was nothing getting uh, grown to maturity. So as I said, I found out about this. Went and got this game plan. Went back to sit down, talk to him, and he went right, okay. He says, you've got it, he says, but he says, on one condition, and I thought, okay, here we go. He says, stay away from the house. And I says, well, no, I don't plan on shooting anywhere near the house. He says, because my wife is dead against this. And he says, I'm already getting grief from her. <laughs> Sitting down speaking to you. And I thought, all right, okay. So he says, whatever you do, low key, keep it low. So I said, right, okay, I will do. So I did a bit of shooting, 
at all, man. It was it was it was road deer heaven. I mean, I was going out there. I was taking two or three road deer a week, and I would sell. I'd sell. I'd keep one for myself and sell the rest. And what I would do was, I would put half the money that I got from it, even though this guy didn't need the money. I put it in an envelope and shove it through his letterbox. I mean, now this was like a big castle he lived in, you know, on this estate. Just a, a bit a token of appreciation to say, look, thanks very much for for uh, letting me shoot here. Anyway, one day I was in Inverurie and I said to this guy, I'm not mentioning any names. I says, look, I says, I'm going for Rodia. I says, you fancy coming with me? He says, oh, Steve, I've been trying to get on this land for years. I says, well, look, I'll take you out. I says, meet me in an hour, blah, blah, blah. So we went out shooting and, and he grabbed a, a 270 caliber, which is a big caliber for Rodia, uh, which is 0 0.270 of an inch. And I, I use 0 0.222 of an inch. Uh, fires a, a, a little 50 grain spitzer at... Uh, like Mark three, and he was firing this uh, 125 grain Spitzer out this 270, and, and we, we got into some deer, and this deer was about 110 yards away, and I says to him, look, I says, look, I says, take that young young deer, it's out the front there, I says, if you're comfortable with the shot, I says, squeeze one off, I says, well, go pick it up, and uh, I says, I'll, I'll keep this one, I says, because it'll be nice and, and tender. It was for the freezer. And he says, right, he says, right, right, I'm happy, I'm right, happy. I take, so he, it's one of these burbots. He took the shot, right? And he shot the front leg off this thing from, from the, from the, the kneecap effectively down, shot it clean off and this deer took off. And I was like, oh my God. God, you know what I mean? I thought this guy was a decent shot. And we went, I went and got my dog. My dog was in my Land Rover. I went and got my dog and we tried to track this deer down and I couldn't track it down. So the next day, straight after work, I went straight out there, got the dog and I got myself set up in the same spot and sure as fate, this deer came back to the same spot, hobbling along on three legs. You know, it had survived the 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 uh, the initial shock of losing well half of one of its front legs, and you know, a, a horrible thing. But I I put put the, the deer out of its of it, its misery, you know. And I think the moral of the story is is that you know, always make always make sure, always make sure that you you know that you're taking it out somebody shooting in such a prestige place that they can shoot straight, you know what I mean? So I never ever invited him out again and he always kept on asking me and I always made up uh, excuses to say to him, no, I'm not, oh no, I'm not shooting there, there just now or, or whatever, but after about 18 months later, I'll get to the end of this story, after about 18 months later, uh, I can remember passing close to the house and and his wife come bounding down, down the, the lane, you know. Are you the chap? Are you the chap that my husband's got here shooting? <laughs> I said, oh, yes. She says, well, I had three deer in, in my garden this morning, and now there's only two of them, and one of them's limping. And I says, well, I says, oh, I says that's nothing to do with me. I says, because I says, uh, I says your husband... Uh, says to me not to shoot anywhere near the house and I haven't and she says it'd be those bloody damn poachers and I was like well that's nothing to do with me I'm afraid anyway a long story short I, the, he phoned me up a couple of weeks later and he says I'm, I'm going to uh, to London for a for a week and he says uh, the wife's gone he says he says get as many as your friends within that week and shoot as many deer as you can as possible, he says, because I can't take any more nagging from my wife. He says, I'm going to have to stop you shooting on the land. And I says, all right, okay. That was about 10 years ago. All right, so the good time stopped, I suppose.
I was in this area as royalty, but he was. But when I met him, he was. Uh, he came in these tatty pair of jeans. He needed a shave. He looked like he needed a wash. His jerseys had patches all over it. But uh, the guy lived in this this castle. That's for sure. A fair mansion. You know what I mean. I'm sure he did have some money, but he walked around like a jakey. You know what I mean. Like say. Somebody like a drunk, you know, that you would meet in the corner and, and ask you for ask you for a buck for a bottle of for a bottle of beer or something, you know. This is a lake trout, I think. Oh it's yeah, let me watch that. Yeah, I think it's a lake trout. I do like my shooting and my fishing. I've not done a, a fishing for a lot of years, but I've, uh, I still keep keep up doing my shooting. I'd like to. I'd like to add a few more guns to do my. They're all sporting rifles. There's none of this automatic fucking assault rifles here. You you don't get that in the UK. You know what I mean? It's uh, sporting hunting rifles or shotguns. That's that's it. You don't get pistols. You're not allowed pistols here. Uh, you're not allowed semi-automatic weapons unless it's small bore. Two two is the only uh, is the only uh, is the only uh, semi-auto rifle you can get, which is small bore caliber. Uh, but you're only allowed uh, sporting rifles. But I'd like to add a few more. But I don't know. I don't know. It was an Atlantic salmon, ten pound. Yeah, decent. Right, I think we'll go and try for a lake trout one more time, and then we'll go and try uh, for some northern pike, and then we'll maybe call it a day there, guys. Well, I hope so, Dar. I hope maybe one day it does call me back. But as I said, that was a few a few years ago now. But yeah, that's what was happening. He was getting a grant from the Forestry Commission and the road they were just eating all these little trees, you know, all the young trees that they were planting. I think I was at the right place at the at the right time of having that friend who lived on the estate on one of the houses on his estate that said, oh, I know a guy that's uh, got, a, got a couple of guns and he's not a bad shot and he's and he's not a nutter, you know. <laughs> how, how wrong they were. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I do like my shooting. I load my own, my own bullets and stuff, you know, I, I look into all the, the ballistic side of it as well, which is, which is, I like that as well, so. I'm a bit geeky when it comes to stuff like that. But I have got, I have got a couple of nice guns. One of my shotguns would, would cost you 20k dollars which I've had it for about eight years now I've only ever used it twice <laughs> all right don't no problem but yeah I've got a I've got three sport and rifles in and uh, two 12 gauge shotguns. Because by law, if you're going to shoot uh, red deer here in Scotland, you've got to have a, an, a minimal base uh, diameter of the bullet and also a minimum muzzle velocity. And there's only certain calibers that fall into that, which allow you to shoot red deer. And the same for the roe deer as well. If you want to shoot roe deer, you've got to have a a, a correct the, the right size caliber, and also the right muzzle velocity as well. But for rabbits and anything else, uh, 
I use a, a basically my 2-2. I've got a Ruger uh, 10-22 with a, a suppressor on it. So I use subsonic uh, ammunition for that. And I've got a 50 a 50 round banana clip on it. So I can do some damage. We normally go for rabbits with a... We call it lamping here in Scotland, which you use a... a a light basically to, to spot them uh, and then you just kind of open fire on them uh, I know these guys in the States uh, do it with, with the wild hogs I'd love to do something like that I really would I'd really love to go I'd, I'd love to go to South Africa as well to do big game hunting uh, like uh, bison or kudu or buffalo or something like that, you know. I'd love to do something like that as well. But maybe, maybe, maybe one day I'll, uh, I'll go do some, like, big game hunting. It's the biggest thing we've got here in Scotland uh, is, is red, or in the UK is, is red deer. It's all hotting up. People are catching all sorts. Right, last cast here, and then we'll head up uh, east, and we'll go some for some uh, northern pike, I think. I might have to go for a a little bathroom a bathroom break after this cast. And then we'll go try and get some pike. My concentration levels on the fish has kind of went out the pond tonight. Or out the windy, as they would say here in Scotland. Getting a bit crowded here, is that? I don't know how many in this room. I think it's six or six people or something. But they all seem to be catching a lot more fish than I am. Anyway, guys, give me two minutes. I'll be right back.
Right, okay, okay. That's me. That's me back. Right, I'm gonna try. What I've got something in the back of my head is saying try one more time here before we go on for the northern pike. But yeah, I mean, Scotland's a, a beautiful place, it really is, but man, oh man, it gets cold here. And it's dark for, Christ, six months of the year, you know. Well, we're in. Didn't have to do anything. Took that, took the spoon on the way down. This is a lake trout. Up she comes. Come on. Yeah, I was right there, little, little hunch, just to have one more cast. Come on, be a decent fish. Ach, don't have to. It's not too bad. Right. Let's see, cheerio. See you later, what's his name? Frostbite. <laughs> See you later, Frostbite. See you later, Mahazi Hips. Alright, okay. Whatever. Whoop. We'll, uh, we'll head up. We'll head up this way. We've got to go up here for the, the Northern Pike where this guy's. Uh, We'll just crash through everything. Oh, there we go. There we go. Right, this is the, the point of the dam that we want to get. Hey, Hughes. Basically, somewhere around about here. Yeah, this looks like a decent spot. So, we'll go to inventory number four. So we're using the, the Phoenix because it lets you cast the, a long distance because it's a long rod, 14 foot 10 inches, 50 pounds, blah blah, blah CC Omnival and we're using a Mono 14 which is 16 pounds, uh, parachute float, hook and shiner so in a, a depth of 32 inches. But basically what you want to do with this is it's just basically cast it over there and let the fun begin the, the piker you, you, you will get a, a Atlantic salmon here as well and a, a lake trout but it's mostly pike but piker Nibble, 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 and then float. I'll, I'll move around. I don't know if uh, if if you've seen it, Dirk, but the, there's a video out there showing the mechanics of uh, of a predatory fish for live bait, it's showing you under the water exactly what happens. So oh, that guy looks like he's in a decent fish. Uh, nibble, nibble, nibble. And then all of a sudden it's like bang. The the, the pike the pike give a, a decent uh a decent fight as well. Sorry, you could probably hear me. <sighs> Drinking away there. Hey, pike what was that? Six point three two it's that's a decent pike for up here. You do get a trophy pike here, but you don't get unique pike up here. I don't think that could be that could be corrected. Again, I think I'm 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 fishing out with the best hours now, because I've been I've been babbling away so much about stuff that yeah, I've got something interested though. Here we go. Oh, is it a pike? 
Conan. Pike tent is zigzag, so you know when you've got a pike on the line that zigzag backs and backwards and forwards. And this isn't really doing that. All right, here we go. Doing a bit of zigzagging now. Yeah, I think this is a pike. Yep, there we go. Yeah, four pounds. See, but see the money. Like for four pounds. I mean, we were landing a, a ten pound Atlantic salmon just to get the same, the same money. But Saint Croix Lake in in, in Michigan. That's. Effectively, that's where you want to fish your money for them for your pike. That's a place to be. Yep, nibble, nibble. You could see that the bobber, look, it's moving. And basically what's happened is that a predatory fish it's, it's come near your live bait because these shiners are live bait and the live bait's thinking oh oh no I'm, uh, I'm gonna get eaten then what happens is that the, the predatory fish kind of ignores it there we go and the, the live bait thinks ah oh, well no no I'm not I'll be all right he's not really after me and then bang that's uh, that's how that mechanic works or that's what it it says on the on the on the video. It shows you actually the underwater mechanics on this video. It's quite good. But these can be a lot of fun to, to fish another pike. There we go. But it'll all be about this size because I'm not using a big hook by any means because it's it's a it's a fairly light setup that I'm using, you know what I mean? Okay, 16 pounds and they're only... But you could see the the initial bang, the initial take, you know, it goes it goes into the red. And it, you can see I've only got my drag set for... Uh, I think about 12 pounds. But the, the northern pike's fun, and they're, they're worth a lot of money. But you don't get any real big ones here. Coming up to the night time. Well, it's just gone midnight here. Good job I've got no work tomorrow. I think this guy's using a... a jig of some sort. He's either using a spinner or a crankbait. It's gone night time now. And you can see my, my float moving around again. I think this place is lovely. Lovely at night as well. See the smoke coming out the the little log cabins that are there. I don't know if that's pretty much a real reflection of how the water should be looking. It looks a bit murky grey, but maybe it, that's what it looks like in Canada when the when the moon's out and it's night time. What do you reckon, Hughes? Any idea, mate? Nah, me neither. Now, see if my, my bobber or the fish hits this 
bit of wooden stump that sticks out, then it's gonna it it's something to do with the where there's there's a glitch it just takes off like a rocket like halfway across the lake. So this is a bigger fist. I don't think this is a a pike though. I think this is this is more like an Atlantic salmon or a. Well, maybe it could be. I've never really fished for uh, the pike at night up here, so. It's only my third time fishing this uh, this place. Yeah, it is a northern pike. Well, it's a bit bigger, a bit better. Yeah, decent money, decent money. But you need to be able to get that distance. And it's 100, 170 feet. You can only get that with a march rod. Me. Oh, a fish straight away. Maybe we've hit the sweet spot for the for the pike. Okay, okay, okay. Go on this way, not that way, this way. No, don't go anywhere near that. This seems to be a bit bigger. Yeah, I think this is another pig. Taking line off me. I could I could increase the drag a little bit, but I think the initial the initial uh, hit on the on the take maybe would be a bit too much for the line. So I always like to have a bit of a safety margin. I don't mind them taking me a bit of line as, as long as I can get the fish in at the end of the day. I think this is a uh, Atlantic salmon. It looked like it. Yeah. Not wanting to come in. Oh, that's a nice fish. Insomniac 3. Yay! I think you get some uh, coin bait, bait coins for that. Yeah, there we go. Got three of them. Oh, dear. Catch fish at night down to complete this challenge. Okay.
Ooh, X series, eh? Gonna buy this stuff. Excellent. Thank you very much. That's supposed to be like their top of the range, super duper, ultra mega fishing gear. Which is which is a nice thing to have in the game, I think, because it, it's always something that kind of pushes you on to get to get this kind of stuff, you know. As I said, you you can't buy it. You've got to you've got to earn it either through the rewards like what we've just done or through competitions. It's the only way you can get this stuff. Someone's sniffing around again. Nine times out of ten, you'll always get fish on the float or bobber because you're you you have to buy the bait effectively. So there is a lure you buy it once, and then that's it. But you you you'll see when it like say maybe another time when it do some top water fishing or or if you've seen them previously when I've done top water fishing it's like you'll get one fish for every five hits. But for bait fishing you you can see it's like it's nearly a hundred percent. It's not quite. That's yeah, another lively fish. Hard to tell what it is at the moment. No, 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 no. See, he's trying to spit the lure. No, 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 no. That's another Atlantic salmon, I think. Yep. Sweet. Yeah, that's ten pounder. See, money, good money, and good experience. Excellent. I <coughs> no problem, Dart. No problem. Some technical issues there, is there? <laughs> It seems to be a bit of a hot spot for the salmon here just now. Again, we've got interest right away, and Youth here has been pulling them in as well, so he's been using his lure. I wonder if it should maybe try a lure. Maybe the pike have gone off. I wonder if we should try that crank. Oh, it might be a bit too deep. Eh, too shallow. I don't know how, eh... How deep that part of the lake is, but I could I could use a shallower crankbait, but no, we're we're getting the fish on the shiner at the moment, so 
I'll probably leave. I'll probably leave the float and the shiner on for the moment. Fresh brick trout. It's what? It's always good to catch a, a unique, a unique fish, no matter what what species it is. It's small, big. It's always good to get a unique. I think I said in the past that the, the unique fish. I think before the you used to get uh, bait coins for it or gold, as it as they used to call it. But you don't you don't get that now. The only way you get uh, bait coins for free is is through achievements. What if you buy them? The only thing I would I would recommend buying if you're if you're new to this game is uh, is some premium. It's like it's like World of the Warships. You get an extra fifty percent on top of your. But I think once you get to to rank forty, uh, I don't think you need premium after that. I think it's a good idea to use your premium to get to rank forty. Because I think once you've un unlocked the biggest uh, keep net in the, in the game, then you're you're pretty much set up. You can. You can go wherever you want on the on the map and, and farm for as long as you want. Whereas if you had a smaller net you'd be restricted and you would have to uh, charge through the day the days a lot quicker and and it costs you to, to stay, you know. I don't like where that is. That was a quick lightning bite, jeez. Wonder if this is a pike then. Nope, I think again this is a Atlantic salmon. Yeah, it's moving a bit too fast in the water for pike. Yeah, see we'd be around about the, the ten pound. Yeah, salmon here. Yeah, we'll keep that. Try and get a few more of them. Whoa. Well they're they're biting hard at the moment. I don't think I'm a far enough out, but uh, maybe I am. Yep, yep. Something interested. I've not fished this uh, this lake much at night at all. Yeah, that's what this guy Hughes is getting as well. Is it Atlantic salmon? 
It must be a hot spot at night time for for uh, the salmon. I'll need to remember that. There was me on the pier throwing crankbait left and right, and not really, not really doing all that great on it. And then you come up here with a with floating some uh, live bait with the shiners and. I'm loving it. I mean, I'm not. I'm not going to film the keeping it up tonight. That's for sure. But if you stay, if you stay two, three, four days, and and it soon adds up. It soon covers your your cost of your uh, your travel and your permit. But as I said, I'm I'm open to suggestions that uh, if you want to see me go to a certain place and, and fish for a certain fish, then I, I'd be quite happy to quite happy to do that. There's a lot of fish up here. But it'd be nice to get a couple of bigger lake trout, but R and Jesus say no. And yet it was just like last night, it fished for half an hour real life time and got nothing and was on the verge of quitting and thought, right, I'll have one more cast and uh, got a unique lake trout, so that's R and Jesus for you. He's still catching a yellow perch. He's got quite a few of them tonight. You do get trophy. Oh uh, yeah, trophy yellow perch. You also get, I don't think you get the unique yellow perch here. I could be wrong. I've got to, I've got to get an invest. I've got enough money to buy him one. I think uh, a kayak. So I'll need to uh, I'll need to invest in one of them and and, and give them a whirl. Because I, I I'm sure it gives you a whole new uh, perspective to the game. Get to places which are, are hard to reach and also see it from a different point of view as well. You know. You know, all I've done is, is really fish from the from the bank in this game. And to be honest, that's all you really need to do. It's 99.9% .9 of the, the places where the fish are, are all accessible from the bank. I want to try to get into some more competitions, but some of the competitions that I, I, want, to, I want to do are like four in the morning and I think, well... I'm never going to be able to do them until the weekend. And normally by four o'clock in the morning on the weekend, it, what you want to do is go to your bed, really. I don't want that float to be going over towards that log that's sticking out. There's, there's there's some uh, crazy physics happens when it does. It's like somebody puts it in a giant catapult and shoots it off to the moon.
It's a chill game though, it's, what have we got? It's definitely a chill game. Something you could come home after work or a stressful day or you just want to do, you know, you just want a couple hours, nice and peaceful, no stress, no saltiness. The community seems to be really, really good. Very helpful. I would recommend that any of you guys that are, if, are, if you like fishing or outdoor type or whatever is, give the game a go. My daughter was playing uh, Daisy earlier on today, the standalone version. I think the, the latest version it's out and she's just a sneaky beggar. She really is a sneaky beggar. She likes to sneak up on people and put them in handcuffs and all sorts of stuff, I'll tell you. She's She's a, she's a far better gamer than I am, you know, I, I didn't really get into, into gaming about four or five years ago. And if there's anything I want to know about a game, I'll go ask her. Now, it seems to be all go. This end of the lake, I don't know how they, the, the other guys are getting on down there. He's got into some pipe, but oh, I see what he be getting is these uh, £10 pound at one. It's salmon, which I'm not complaining about. I'm not complaining, they're giving me decent money and yeah, they're giving me decent XP as well. There's been no diminished returns on them, it's when you start seeing the red arrows here. Means that you're not getting as much as uh, as you should be because you've you've caught a lot of them. Effectively, what that is. It'd, it'd be nice to get a a couple of more light trout though. I think that's my. My favourite fish in the game, I suppose, because there's a there's a lot of trout here in Scotland in the in the lakes and the rivers. A lot of trout. Like trout central up here. Salmon. Brown trout, rainbow trout. Sea trout at certain times of the year. When the salmon are running, the sea trout will come in as well. Lovely fish, beautiful fish. Really good, hard fighting fish. He's getting the pike now. Wonder what lure he's using. Wouldn't mean a couple of more pike. Just for a bit of diversity, really. I should have changed my, my bobber to the to my, my X Illuminous. I think it puts it in your if you're a, if you're away 
from like your your home base. It, it puts it in your home storage, so you you can't access it from your home. <coughs> Excuse me. You can't access your home storage when you're when you're away at a lake. You've got to travel back. It doesn't cost you anything to travel back, but then again, if you want to come back again to the lake, uh, it costs you to do that. I'd love to start this game from the beginning again and do like a a, a series from like day one all the way through, but. I don't know if I could or not because the grind from level 39 to 40 is uh, it's so destroying it really is especially if if you didn't have premium account I think all in all and it, it took me about a week like solid three four five hours fishing every night to get uh, to get to level 40 but I, don't, I don't know what you can unlock after level 40 as I said I would need to speak to or, or do a bit of research but I'd, I'd need to speak to a couple of the guys that I've made friends with on here to, uh, who've been level 40 for a long time and ask them because I, I think it's like after 40, you get like say prestige level 1, level 2, level 3. Pardon me. So there's, there's obviously some, there's obviously got to be some sort of mechanics that's got to keep you interested in, in the game, even when, when you get to level 40 and you think you've unlocked everything, but I'm sure I haven't. Because I've seen stuff that I think... Well, right, oh, yeah, I fancy that. And then if you go to the shop and have a look for it, you think, whoa, it's not there. So where is it? Or not unless it's it was given for a certain achievement, you know? So that's the only bit I'm unsure about. Advanced license and belt. Is it? Yeah. Once you once your license, once your license runs out, and uh, you catch like a a trophy or a unique fish, you can't. Uh, you can't put it in your keep net, or you get fined. I don't know how much it is, but it's quite a lot. Some places it could be up to like 20,000 in-game credits, which is... This is a couple of days fishing, really. Another Atlantic salmon. Well, it seems to be good hunting up here. I'll need to remember that if I want to come and farm some Atlantic salmon at night time up here. I mean, it seems to be 10, 10 pound, 11 pound, 10 and a half pound. XP is still pretty good and the money is good. So. Well, I think I'll I'll give it a couple of more casts, guys, and then I'll call it quits on the fishing and relax a bit for for half an hour. Have a little bit more of my my cider and see what happens. I might even uh, I might even. Maybe stream a bit of warships, maybe. And maybe say half an hour or three quarters of an hour's time. 
I don't know. I'll see how I feel. I'm feeling pretty tired, so. Well, maybe not. Maybe if I do some more sips, it might just wind me up a bit. Which is the last thing I'm wanting it. Half past midnight. But hey ho, you never know. I know most of these people are worship worships people because you're you're avid dirt followers, which I am myself. I like to try and catch as much uh, of his worship city streams. That's why I was a bit later uh, coming on tonight. Normally I'd be on. Well, I, we had some visitors as well, but I could have been on about uh, an hour earlier. But I was watching Dirt playing his worships, and I was like caught between a rock and a hard place, as they say here. Whereas I wanted to go fishing, but I wanted to watch him play his worships. And chat with the with the community, you know. What I mean, it's always good to chat with the guys in the in Dirt's live stream. You always meet new people, and and the guys that are there are are, are the regulars, which I have been for the last. Well, maybe coming up for a year now, maybe. Yeah. Right, we'll give it one more, I think. And then we'll call it quits. And then who knows, maybe in half an hour or an hour or so I might I might try and do some worships. As I said, I've not got I've got no work tomorrow. I am gonna see my mum. Gonna go down and see her tomorrow. I go down Every week, do her shopping and that for her. Go down, she always makes me dinner. It's always good to go home and get your, your mum's home cooking. Takes you back to your... to being a kid. But it does for me, anyway. It's always nice to see family as well. Oh, well, there goes my license. So I don't know whether I can keep this fish or not. I might get away. Another Atlantic salmon. Jeez, it's been bingo on the, the salmon up here. I need to remember that. Could be like a wee mini farm sort of thing, you know. If you're up here in the in the lake trout are not biting, then switch it to night time and throw the shiners out and, and farm the farm the salmon. Let me see, is it going to tell me to throw it back? Ah, uh, yeah, you go. <coughs> Excuse me. You can't fish without a license. The fine amount is 10,000, right? Okay. I've got to let it go, unfortunately. Well, I suppose that's a... A good point to... This verification and... Uh, I let it go. What? I let it go. What have I been fined for? Mm, I don't get that. I don't get that at all. I let the fish go. Oh, I've just been shafted by the game. <laughs> 10,000. Oh, come on. A joke. I let the fish go. Anyway, let me see what we got. 
So I've got, what, nearly 200 pounds, 190 pounds worth of fish, 21 fish. 13,000. Can't believe it, it took 10k off me. What was the biggest fish? Lake trout. Yeah, 12 pounds. 12 pounds. Salmon, 10, 10. Yeah, so the salmon was coming in fast and furious at the end there. Lake trout, lake trout, salmon, 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 salmon. Some pike and a barbit. So yeah, that was, that was basically what a whole day's fishing here. Could have been a bit better. Could have been worse, but I kind of believe that they, they skinned me for 10k at the end. Fucking highway robbers, that's all I could say. So anyway guys, if if there's anything you want to want to see me go fishing for or or go to a certain place, whatever, leave leave a leave a message in the comments below and I'll uh, I'll see what I can do. And if you enjoyed uh, the stream tonight, leave a like. They always help. Uh, as I'm saying, I'm trying to get this uh, channel up and going. And, uh, it's been good, I've enjoyed it, and, I, and I'm glad you, you've stuck around and uh, watched me do a bit of fishing and, and speak a lot of shit, really, at the end of the day, which which I enjoy doing anyway, which is a, it's, it's good fun. So, uh, thanks again. It's a pleasure as always. So, uh, Take care, guys. Thanks a lot, and uh, I'll see you soon. Good night.